All right, welcome to this lecture series. In this lecture, we are going to be looking at nucleus. Well, um, the nucleus is a very important part of the plant. And not just the plant, even in animals and everything that has to do with the living. The nucleus is where we, we get to determine our hereditary. So plants also get to determine the hereditary turrets by having the nucleus do that um, transfer of hereditary from one parent plant to the daughter plant. So nucleus in generally is in this shape. It is comprised of the endoplasmic reticulum which is um, an outgrowth of the nuclear membrane, the nucleolus, the chromatin, the chromatin carries the characteristics of the DNA, which also symbolizes the form, uh, the hereditary traits. The nucleoplasm, the nuclear pore, and the nuclear envelope. A whole lot of other things also um, comprises of the uh, nucleus. So let's, what is the nucleus? It is the controlling center of the cell. The chromosome and gene are found within it, which determine the character, activities, and destiny of each cell. Whatever a cell is going to be is determined by what the chromosome has, or whatever it carries, its makeup. Uh, it is what determines whatever that a cell is going to be. And if it's going to divide, what kind of daughter cell will it form is determined by the nucleus. Excuse me. Each nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear, nuclear membrane, a nucleus membrane, which is a double layer consisting of protein and lipid, similar to plasma membrane. The major parts of chromatin, which become the major parts of the major parts consist of chromatin, which becomes distinct as a definite number of chromosomes during cell divisions. The chromatin becomes um, distinct during cell division, but when cell division is not occurring, it looks like what it looked in the image above that just passed okay so let's just go back and see all right see what it looks like it doesn't look distinct at this point in time because cell division is not about to occur but once cell division is about to occur it becomes to look distinct begins to go into this formation yeah all right so let's go back Each nucleus consists of a nuclear membrane, a nucleoplasm, nucleolus, and chromatin, like I've showed you before. Now let's look at the nuclear membrane. The nuclear membrane consists of two membranes, which are 90 Armstrong thick, and the space in between them uh, is about 100 to 115 Armstrong wide. This nuclear membrane con possesses pores of varying diameter, it's 400 to 600 Armstrong. That's how wide it is. Through it, the nucleus communicates with the cytoplasm. It is the aid of the nuclear pore that the nucleus is able to com communicate with the cytoplasm and tell the cytoplasmic organelles what it wants to do, such as the site of protein synthesis, as well as um, uh, other ribosomes. The number of nuclear pores vary from cell to cell, as well as from species to species. All nucleus are not the same. Some cells have similar nucleus and those cells could be tagged, those ones that are doing similar function in grouped into a tissue. But a cell that is not of the same tissue have different nuclear uh, composition as well as nuclear pores. The same applies to species. So and that's why you cannot have um, John looking like A when John and A had nothing in common to share in respect to um, their nuclear, their cell exchanges. So the outer surfaces of the nuclear membrane has RNA, that means um, ribosomal uh, nucleic acid. With granules attached to it, these are called ribosomes. Those granules are called ribosomes. It forms the endoplasmic reticulum, this, the nuclear membrane, the inside cells of the, the inside lies the nucleoplasm. 
the outside of the nuclear membrane lies the endoplasmic reticulum okay get these distinctions clear the inside of the nucleoplasm lies the nucleoplasm the inside of the nuclear membrane lies the nucleoplasm which contains nucleic acid okay nuclear protein sorry for that mix up the nucleolus is a distinct rank body known as nucleoli the number per nucleus of species is definite e.g. onion has four which fuses together sometimes <clears throat> the nuclei are made up of small granules containing proteins and RNA which has some part to lay which has some part lay, 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 lying in the nucleus it helps in the synthesis of nuclear protein lacks membrane nucleoli has a role to play in the biogenesis of cytoplasmic ribosomes it has contact with chromosome chromatin this is the hereditary material of the cell. Genes found on the chromosome determine the characteristics of the species. Chromatin has four major chemicals. Histone, a low molecular weight, a more complex protein, deoxyribonucleic acid, and ribonucleic acid. DNA. DNA determines hereditary uniqueness on the cell, an individual. A compound of molecular weight of over 1 million made up of a number of molecules linked together, such as sugar, deoxyribose, phosphoric acid, and four bases. The four bases are the pyrimidines, which make up the, which are made up of thiamine and cytosine, purines, adenine, and guanine. DNA in eukaryotic cell may be classified as follows: nuclear DNA found in the nucleus, mitochondria DNA found in mitochondria, and chloroplast DNA found in the chloroplast. What this simply means is that the the DNA itself is not limited to the nucleus. There are DNA in the mitochondria. Their DNA in the chloroplast, all able to help in the, the, the cell metabolic activities and the cell uh, res, uh, respiratory activities as well. Okay, all right. So, uh, we said that the DNA is made up of more number of molecules which are linked together. We talked about the sugar, we talked about the deoxyribose, we talked about the phosphoric acid, we talked about the four bases the thiamine, cytosine and adenine and guanine which are categorized into two the later uh, the former two are pyrimidines and the later two are purines <clears throat> what are the functions of dna carries genes from one generation to another it is responsible for the manufacture of messenger rna is a controlling center for protein synthesis it possesses power of reduplication the mitochondria functions controlled by mDNA. The chloroplast functions and formation of chlorophyll are controlled by cDNA. Most biosynthetic functions of cells are controlled by DNA. Controls the formation of ribosomes and RNA. It gives rise to formation of enzymes. RNA consists of a single strand may form helix in the form of DNA with hydrogen bonded bases. It contains ribose sugar which possesses an additional oxygen, oxygen molecule not found in deoxyribose sugar. Some base pairs as DNA but thiamine is replaced with uracil which possesses one metal group less. Ribosomal RNA transport or soluble RNA and messenger RNA these are the four the three categories of rna we have okay the small large units is the mrna while the large unit is the transport rna the mrna carries message from dna to the actual site of protein synthesis the transport rna carries a specific amino acid to the site of protein synthesis while the ribosomal rna function is yet unknown so this is still in the develop, de, uh, discovery stage scientists are yet to f figure out the, 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 the function of the ribosomal RNA all right the mitochondria the mitochondria is known as a powerhouse of the cell yes it consists of the in outer mitochondria membrane the inner mitochondria membrane the intermembrane spaces okay it has a matrix, 
it has a crystal, the foldings, are known as the crystal, the folding points. We have the ribosomes suspended in it, and we have the mitochondria DNA. Remember the mitochondria DNA? Yes, inside of it. There are microscopic bodies found in the cytoplasm of cells and varies in number, <clears throat> about 2,500 per cell. Most are granular rod or thread shape in terms of their shape, generally known as powerhouses of cells, sites of chemical events which supply energy to the cell. There is, is responsible for the fat synthesis. The size ranges from 0 0.2 micro unit to 3.0. Each has a double layer envelope with outer and inner membranes. Each membrane is a typical unit membrane, being about 50 to 70 Armstrong thick. Both membranes are 60 to 100 Armstrong apart, filled with fluid rich in enzymes. Extending from the membrane in the a series of inner folding called cristae, shorter in mitochondria of plant origin. Increased surface area in the interior. Number of folds per unit of volume varies. Mitochondria has two cavities. The outer between the membranes. The inner cavity limited by crystal. Mitochondria are essential structures where combustion of organic substances takes place. They perform two important tasks. One, carbohydrate, proteins and fats are broken down into smaller molecules during which energy is transferred. This process takes place through a series of steps, each controlled by an enzymes. You get, more to, you get to know more about this process in uh, crop physiology. Such reactions are known as oxidation. Energy is not yielded in form of heat, but passed on to another molecule that contains phosphate, where it is stored by a process of phosphorylation in the form of energy phosphate bonds known as adenosine triphosphate. So it has two forms, it breaks down carbohydrate, proteins and fat, and it also leads to the formation of energy, which is used by the plant to carry out certain metabolic activities. Plastids. All right, cell, plant cell chloroplast structure is an example of plastids. It contains an outer membrane, the inner membrane, stoma, stoma lamellae, st stroma, which is a liquid form inside of the plastid, the thylakoids, which are foldings that looks like disc upon one another, intermembrane space, granum. The stack of thylakoids is called a granum. There are small, variously shaped bodies found in cytoplasm of plant cells. The plastids develop from proplastids. Some contain pigments such as chlorophyll, carotenoids, some are center of starch, protein, and fat accumulation. Proplastids are things that lead to the formation of plastids, like a potential of plastids, okay? They are organs that are growing at the form of uh, the stage of um, embryo uh, emergence. When uh, the plant begins to emerge from an embryo, as that they, the things become, they have proplastids in those uh, embryo, and those proplastids lead to the formation of uh, plastids, okay? So they have uh, some pigments such as the chlorophyll, the carotenoid, which some of which are center of starch, protein, and fat accumulation. You get to know more as we progress. The colorless plastids are leucoplasts, pigment chloroplast, and green colored chloroplast. They do not mix with the cytoplasm in which they are found. They are independent bodies on their own. Now let's look at the colorless plastid, which is the leucoplast. Colorless plastids found in cells of plant tissue. They include amyloplast for storing starch, elioplast for storing oils and fatty substances, and alleroplast for storing proteins. Now you know where these things are stored in the cell. Okay? Take note of them. Amyloplasts are found in scotledons, endosperm, and in storage organs such as potato tubers. Elioplasts commonly found in the tissue of liverworts and monocotyledons. Please, this is monocotyledons, not monocotyledons. Leucoplasts often appear as small masses of protoplasms, variable and unstable in form. Chromoplasts, pigmented plastids of plants. 
these are pigmented plastics of plants they may be red orange or yellow e.g the tomato fruit carrot roots contain carotenoid pigments which are the chromoplasts they give that the flower coloration uh, of red that thing that makes the flower to look red that makes the flower to look pink makes the flower to look orange makes the flower to look whatever color it has is due to the chromoplasts they show great variety in shape but chiefly irregular granular angular acicular or forked they are associated with colors in flowers fruits and roots now let's look at the chloroplast this is the most interesting part in terms of crop science uh, because it's where the uh, what what makes the plant green is the chloroplast is this, the sequence of the trapping of light energy its conversion into chemical energy and its storage in molecules from carbon dioxide and water is known as photosynthesis this photosynthesis is initiated in the chloroplast photosynthesis is initiated by the capture of light energy in the green pigment called chlorophyll this chloroplast is the cytoplasmic particle in which this occurs so chlorophyll is inside the chloroplast so the photosynthetic activities which take place in the chlorophyll is taking place inside the chloroplast it is the largest cytoplasmic structure in the cytoplasm that can be seen with a low powered microscope okay a low powered microscope all right so let's um get that corrected let's get that corrected right away low powered microscope all right <clears throat> the size shape and distribution vary from different cells and species but remain li relatively constant in same tissue four to six micro units in diameter and one to three micro in thickness may be spherical or, sp or void or discord right a matured chloroplast remains surrounded by a semi-permeable membrane which comprises of two separate layers. Semi-permeable membrane means it has a selective ability to allow something come in, something not come in, okay? And a space between them. Internally organized into series of lamella and non-lamella areas, which is stroma. The grana remain embedded in the stroma. The number of granules is very varies in different chloroplasts. Each granum consists of double membrane disc or lamella which vary in thickness gram granum lamella and stroma lamella so various particles may be found we have the chloroplast ribosomes the proteinaceous stroma we have this uh, starch grains we have the osmophilic global and sometimes phytoferritin as well as fine fibrils of dna remember i told you about the c dna in the stroma is found suspended a chlorophyll containing lipoprotein membrane system serve as a site of light reaction and electron transport system operating during photosynthesis it is found in the form of flattened sacs called thylakoids you now know what they're talking about the development of the chloroplast takes place during germination of seed in the dark remember i told you proplastids pro pro the cells of the seed contain small double membrane structures which appear colorless but can be shown to contain low concentration of substances which are precursors of chlorophyll. When exposed to light, these precursors are immediately converted to chlorophylls. Same time, a process and growth, growth and development occurs which lead to the transformation of small prochloroplasts into typical photosynthetic chloroplasts. This entire process takes place within 24 hours of germination of the seed. The main functions of chloroplasts are to take part in active photosynthesis, to trap light energy, which is used for enzymatical control reactions to form an energy compound called ATP. Chloroplast is a dual energy converter since the energy of sugar and ATP can be used in the cell in a variety of ways. So these are the different plastids, the chromoplasts, the proplastids, the chloroplast, the lycoplast, and the amyloplast. So that is all for this lecture series. And um, if you have any questions, please do well to ask via the comment section or any other channels available. So thank you.
See you in the next lecture series.